Today, I'm gonna to do a driving review of a documentary I stumbled upon. Um, it chronicles the brief life and career of Swedish driver Ronnie Peterson. The documentary is simply titled Super Swede. So here we are at Silverstone 1975 edition in a Lotus 72E. Which I'll happily tell you more about once I survive this start. So to emulate Ronnie Peterson in the sim racing world, you actually have some pretty good options. Ultimately, as you can see, I decided on AMS2. It's a version of their Formula Retro Gen 1 with a 1975 car. Actually, this is a 74 car set. Uh, easily available at race department. And it just looks fantastic. The immersion is spectacular, both because of the game, the body, the car models look fantastic, the skins look fantastic, the AI performances for the uh, drivers are realistic. I think I just shifted into a non-existent sixth gear. I really, really, really wanted to do this video filming in GTR2. Not, well, part of it because of the kitschiness of being able to race formula cars in GTR2. Um, but there was a uh, decent 1971 Formula One car set and it would get, have given me the opportunity to race as Ronnie Peterson in his 71 March, which is just funny because it has that absolutely ludicrous tea tray front wing. But also that was a good year for Ronnie in that he finished second in the driver's championship to Jackie Stewart, who was really just, he crushed everybody. Uh, I don't think, um, Ronnie actually won any races in that car. He was just finished runner up to Jackie several times. I believe the final point tally was something like 62 points for Stewart and 33 for Ronnie. I'm holding these guys up pretty bad. Uh, another option would have been R Factor 2, which has a decent. 1975 mod available from the Steam Workshop. Unfortunately, I just couldn't, the, the quality of the tracks, uh, the quality of the mod itself, you're subject to the, the modders. I thought the, the best option would be this Lotus 72E, technically 1974. As for the, the documentary is it, ex itself, Super Swede was uh, produced in 2017. It looks like it's a, a native Swedish production. It was probably the primary language and it was localized to English and obviously they, they interview a lot of people who are native English speakers, which is convenient. It's a very, very well produced documentary, very slick. Um, it does not feature a lot of talking heads, which is just people sitting there and uh, you're watching them talk for an hour and a half. Um, there is some of that, but it's usually overlaid onto excellent footage. 
that's what really makes this documentary and what stands out in its quality is the amount of archival footage they were able to get to help tell the story of Ronnie Peterson. There's a substantial amount, there's a substantial amount of photographs and they use them well, they, whoops, they linger on them for a long enough time so you can absorb them. There's also excellent video footage, both official media type footage official newsreels, uh, telecasts, but also, and this is really what's impactful, is there's a lot of uh, behind the scenes, home movie type footage. And if you think about this period in Formula One, drivers were much closer than they are now. So you get to see a significant amount of all these drivers hanging out. Um, for instance, when they had to go to South America to start the season, they all stay in the same hotel, they all bring their families, um, and you get to see them basically horsing around and living life before they had to go to work. Okay, I'm going to pass this guy and he's going to pass me right back. Or maybe I won't. I have my hands full with this car and with this uh, the differential. But uh, the documentary has, you know, testimonies from other drivers. And you have to remember, he drove with some of the best. He drove as teammates to uh, Jody Schechter, a former world champion, Mario Andretti, a world champion, Emerson Fittipaldi, a world champion. Uh, his record stands for it itself. And he, of course, he raced for Ken Tyrrell and Colin Chapman at Lotus. Um, Max Mosley at March. Um, in all, because of the, the footage and the story and how tastefully it's put together, it's a very well produced documentary and I highly recommend it. On a rating scale, I would give it 10 cylinders out of 12, if that's not too kitschy. Now, I was able to watch the documentary on a uh, free app. It was a, an ad-supported service called Tubi TV, T-U-B-I. I do know that that was scheduled to leave that service, though, at the end of January 24. I believe you can still watch it on another ad-supported service called Crackle. So if you can find it on Crackle for free, I would definitely watch it. And if you were a big fan of Peterson and you haven't seen this, it, it would definitely be worth adding to your Blu-ray collection if you want to get it that way. I just hit the fictional sixth gear again. So I'm driving a... Lotus 72E, which has an interesting story in itself. For 1974, Lotus had replaced the 72 with a Lotus 76. And the car was just a dog from the get-go. It was just fundamentally flawed. By the time they got to Monaco of that year, um, Ronnie was just saying we, we have to start over we have to get the get the 72 back into production so they made a, a revised version of the 72d which i believe emerson won his uh championship with in 72 and made the 72e they took it out to monaco in 74 and it won and i think it won two to three other grand prix ah uh, two to three other Grand Prix that year. Uh, I did race again in 75, but by that point, it was just a little too long in the tooth. At that point, Ronnie got a little dissatisfied with, um, with Colin and 
went back to March for a little while. He raced the six-wheeler, the six-wheeler Tyrrell in 77, um, but did agree to, to return to Lotus in 78 and was able to drive the Lotus 79 to good effect. All in all, Ronnie was able to notch 10 Grand Prix wins, and as I mentioned, this was against some really formidable competition of the day. Uh, 25 podiums over that span, which again is very impressive. Finished second in the Drivers' Championship twice, that first time to Jackie Stewart in 71, and actually in uh, 1978, he was posthumously runner-up to Mario Andretti, um, despite there being a full two races left to run that season at the time of his passing. Uh, he was really on fire in that car. And if, if uh, it, had he survived into 79, um, it's possible that Lotus would have taken the reins off of him and let him challenge for more race victories if the the Lotus of 1979 would have uh, been capable of challenging okay I think I should just try to get this car home in one piece. Super sweet, I am not. Oh, look at that wing. So the race didn't turn out much like I wanted, certainly not representative of something Peterson could have done with the car. Um, but I had a great time testing these different versions of Ronnie's cars, including the, low, the March of 1971 and GTR2 and uh, bouncing across project cars and the 72D that they feature there. Um, ultimately, I did stay away from racing the Lotus 79. I just... I didn't want to race the car that he ultimately perished due to. Um, but I had a lot of fun taking these cars and, and kind of going through the, the period and obviously learning more about Ronnie and this was um, all came about because of the Super Sweet documentary. Uh, highly recommend it um, if you get a chance to watch it. Uh, until next time, thank you.